months wasn't just limited to one day, hallelujah. But God, as we stand here, God, available and ready, God, hallelujah, that we receive your glory, God. We receive your glory, God. We receive your glory, God. We receive your glory. glory. God, and we thank you for the outpouring that is today. Hallelujah. We thank you for the life-changing anointing that is today. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. Hallelujah. For your glory. We thank you, God. Hallelujah. For your glory. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. Hallelujah. For your glory.
Because I want to stay there. Don't, don't, don't let that drop. And so because it's Pentecost Sunday and because we're not bound by program. <laughs> Come on. Tammy, that was awesome. We can just stay right there. This is your call to worship. This is your scripture. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't feel called to worship right now, somebody stand up here reading that scripture is not going to help you feel like you've been called to worship. And so because it is Pentecost Sunday and because we understand that this is the birthday of the Holy Spirit indwelling each of us, we came to give God praise today. Is that right? We came to give him worship today. We came to bless his name today. Is there anybody on the praise team that just came to bless his name today? Is there anybody in the congregation that just came to bless his name today? Because he's worthy of our worship. And he's worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. So come on, praise team. I just want y'all to flow. Right on this, whatever y'all was going to do, we're going to move right on into praise and worship. But you can't, you can't get here and then go back to something else. Hallelujah. You can't get to this level of worship and then go back to a program. Hallelujah. Come on. Matter of fact, you all lift your hands. Those of you in the, in the congregation, come on, lift up your hands and just begin to worship the Lord. Come on, with the fruit of your own lips, you need to bless the name of the Lord. If nothing else, you need to just thank him for the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Okay, see, y'all just standing there, but some of y'all know if it had not been for the Holy Spirit in your life, you would have jumped off that bridge. You would still be in the crack house. You would still be on alcohol. You would still be a hormone or a fornicator. You would still be outside of Christ, but because of the power of the Holy Spirit. Come on. I need some believing believers to charge this atmosphere today. Come on, I need you to begin to speak, even in your heavenly language. Come on, stir in this atmosphere, beloved.
That's not important. That's good. That's good. Y'all good? Yeah. Watch this. I've been sharing this. I shared it on Periscope, and I shared it with the young ladies that I mentor on last night. But I want to make sure I deposit it in this house. Not much is said in the Bible about the sons of Ishakar. As a matter of fact, the only thing that the Bible say about Ishakar is that they were the tribe, watch this, that knew how to discern the times and the seasons. And they were the tribe that knew what Israel needed to do. Even if all of the rest of Israel was clueless, Ishakar was anointed to be able to discern the times and the season and know what needed to take place. I'm standing this morning as a type of Ishakar for you. Because Pentecost Sunday is not just about coming in and giving God a shout, yeah. though we will. But Pentecost Sunday is also the beginning of reaping season. Now, 10 of y'all gonna miss it. This is your season of reaping. Now, for those that don't have no seed in the ground, you can't get excited over reaping. The only people, Christy, that can get excited about reaping are the folks that know they got a seed in the ground. I don't understand what that means. Oh, God, thank you, Jake. See, there's some folk under, in this congregation that you've been sowing in tears. You had to go through some rough nights and some dark days and some hard times. And sometimes you weren't sure that God was even still interested. But I came to declare over you this day that as we celebrate Pentecost Sunday, you have come into your season of reaping. Hallelujah. What you sowed in tears. God, I wish I had a house. What you sowed in tears, you get ready to reap in joy. Somebody ought to tell God, thank you. I'm going to get out the way and let the praise team come. But I dare you real quickly to just go tell three people, welcome to your season of reaping. Come on, tell them, welcome to your season. Welcome to your season of reaping. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, God. Tell them welcome to your season of reaping. Oh, no, 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 no,
listen, this is generally the time where we just let go. <laughs> but if y'all could do one thing for me, I dare you to just think about one thing that he's done for you. And when he think about it, get up and shout Jesus and see what happens. I'm a, I'm a strong guy. Y'all can call on me. I might be able to move a refrigerator or a couch or something. But I dare you to call on Jesus and see what he can move in your life. Because there's power in the name of Jesus. If you don't believe me, try it. Just say it real quick. Say Jesus. Jesus. See, right about there, you should have felt something in your spirit. Okay. Shout Jesus. Oh my God. of the older songs and the, and the purpose of calling on God's name and, and Jesus' name. But when I promise you, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, see that all is something serious because all didn't include, all didn't include everything at, at the time where, where I was going through my situations. All didn't include almost getting shot. All didn't include almost getting stabbed. All didn't include getting in five accidents. But when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. My very soul cries out, hallelujah. My God.
lift my hands. I lift my hands. Y'all know this song. Stand on up and let's just worship. Hallelujah. More than anything. Hallelujah. We love our Savior. Hallelujah. More than life is real.
love you.
love you more than anything. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you more than anything. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. My assignment today is to talk to you about the power of Pentecost and what that and how that is relevant to our lives even on today. Amen? So, of course, I asked the question, exactly what is the day of Pentecost? Which we've kind of went over it even on today. But just for your hearing, it's the representation of God. Is, is when, I'm sorry. This represents the day that Jesus ascended up, up into heaven, and then his Holy Spirit and his power was poured out amongst his people. Amen. So that is the day of Pentecost. That is what that represents. But then I ask the question, who qualifies for the power of Pentecost that was released on that day? And if you will go to Acts chapter 2, you will hear Peter say, if you repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus, you then qualify for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now that seems simple, right? I go ahead and I repent and I be baptized and then I can receive the Holy Spirit. I know that seems simple, but see, the issue is so many people possess the power of the Holy Spirit, but they do not operate in the power of the Holy Spirit. Why is that so, you ask? I'm glad that you ask because some people, for some reason, have the misconception that the Holy Spirit is only associated with you speaking in tongues or dancing up and down these aisles. For so many years, we thought, oh, the Holy Spirit must be upon them because they're dancing and they're shouting. The Holy Spirit must be upon them because they're speaking in tongues. Now, don't get me wrong. I am not downplaying speaking in tongues. I am not downplaying dancing before the Lord because all of those things are relevant. But what I'm here to say to you today is God is saying, don't limit the power to just dancing and hashandarabosayas. Don't just limit my power. Don't put my power in a box. Has my power not been there for you when I've healed your body? Has my power not been there when you needed a way out of no way? Has my power not been there when I paid some bills that you didn't know how I was going to get paid? Did I use my power to regulate your mind when everything in your life was going crazy? Don't put my power in a box. See, what we do is we allow the evidence of the Holy Spirit the evidence of the Holy Spirit to trip us up. As a matter of fact, I have a friend who is saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit. And she says to me, which, and when, as a baby saint, she would say, well, I don't know when I'm going to get filled with the Holy Spirit. I've never spoken in tongues. I've never shouted. She probably know who I'm talking about. That's why she's smiling. I said, but that doesn't indicate that you are not walking with the power of Christ. That does not indicate that the power of Christ is not dwelling within you. You have to look at the fruit that you are producing. If you never speak in tongues, if you never dance up and down an aisle, you need to know that the power of the Lord is working within you and you have full authority to conquer what the Holy Spirit said that you are capable of accomplishing. Does that make sense? Now, not only does the power of Pentecost give you the ability to receive the goodness of the Holy Spirit, but it also gives you the power to do the things that God has called you to do. Let me make my point here. When God created you, when he created his masterpiece and he did every detail and every aspect of your life, when he shaped your eyes, shaped your nose, shaped your feet, when he numbered every hair on your head or the lack thereof. <laughs> on top of that, he also instilled some things within you 
some character, your personality, your gifts, your talents, your purpose, and your destiny. He equipped you with all of those things before your mother even knew who you were. As a matter of fact, some of us are sitting here right now and we have some gifts that we do realize, but we just don't utilize. Some of us are sitting here and we recognize our gifts and our talents and we use them, but we don't use them to glorify God. Some of us are sitting here with some gifts and some talents that we haven't even tapped into yet. Oh, but when you tap into the power source of the Holy Spirit, every gift, every talent, your destiny and your purpose becomes activated. And you then have to, the ability to flourish in the things that God has called you to. And as you continue to walk with God, and as you continue to talk with God, and as you begin to live your life according to the way he wants you to live it, as you become on one accord with the things that God wants you to do, that's when, somebody say that's when, that's when you get that power that was released in Acts chapter 2, that suddenly power that overtakes your life and bring forth everything that God has intended for you to do. Oh my God, look at your neighbor and say, are you ready for the suddenly? Y'all not ready for the suddenly. Y'all not ready for the suddenly. Oh, Shonda, the Messiah, you're not ready for the suddenly. Real quick, I'm going to try to make my point just a little bit clearer to you. As I know, I have a four-year-old son, and he loves the cartoon Power Patrol. His uncle bought him a book bag, and he didn't take the book bag off for like three days, I think. He slept in the book bag. Sometimes you got to use the stuff around you. With me being a single mama, I watch a lot of Paw Patrol. And sometimes, even in the midst of that, God's power will show himself strong. So as I think I'm bored watching Paw Patrol, the spirit of the Lord, he speaks to me. Now, some of y'all who are not familiar with Paw Patrol, it's about six or seven dogs, little pups, okay? That's right. They have a master by the name of Ryder, or owner, as you would say. And at the beginning of each episode, at the beginning of each episode, if y'all just catch this, I promise it'll, it'll bless you. They're running around the yard doing what pups do. Whether it's catching a frisbee, running and catching bones, whatever it is that they are intended to do. And they wear this watch. And when their owner calls, they respond. And then Ryder tells them in the watch, we have a crisis. Okay? Immediately, immediately these pups go to their meeting place. But watch this. This time when you see the pups, they are now dressed. They are now dressed in the attire of the power that they possess. Their writer, their master is then standing before them. And he flashes the crisis on the screen. All the pups are lined up right in front of them. And depending on the crisis, who shine that on a sign? Depending on the crisis, he picks about two or three of those pups. He says, Sky, I need you. Ryder, I need you. Zuma, I need you because you three are the one that can accomplish this crisis. The response of the pups are this. No job too big. No pup too small. Y'all missed it already. No job too big. No pup too small. What is your response when God suddenly needs the power that you possess? Do you say, uh, 
said, and I know you ain't called me to do that. No. What if your response was, no assignment too big because my God is not small. Okay, I know that wasn't scriptural. So what if you say, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. What if your response is, if God be for me, who can be against me? Yes, God. What if your response is, God, I know that you will never leave me nor forsake me. Maybe no scripture comes up and you just simply say, God, if you said I can do it, then I can do it. The question is, are you ready for your suddenly? Are you ready for God to activate your power? What will your response be? Now listen, I have to tell you this before I take my seat and we're going to get the real preachers up here. I told you that there were six or seven pups. But for this particular assignment, he only called two or three. So tell me what the other pups are doing. Perhaps, I didn't see this episode, but perhaps they're standing around saying, well, I don't know why writer called them. I definitely could have did the job a lot better than they did. Every time I turn around, he uses God. They could have been standing back there murmuring and complaining. But yet and still, they also go to the scene. And instead of murmuring and complaining, they're encouraging their fellow folks. Oh, God. Sometimes it looks like they're not going to accomplish their goal. But the other two or three are standing on the sidelines saying, Suma, I know you can do it. Just keep going. Sky, I know it looks like you're not going to make it, but keep moving. Suma, I know you're getting weary and well-doing, but just keep going. You're almost there. Bible says that your gift will make room for you. So don't get upset when it's not your turn. Your responsibility is to encourage and motivate your brothers and sisters so that when your time comes, you are ready for the suddenly. I promise I'm going to my seat, but if you stand there murmuring and complaining about the next person, you just might miss your suddenly. So, as I take my seat, I hope this encouraged you to allow you to know that the power still dwells among you. This power still dwells within you. And it's your responsibility to be ready when the suddenly comes. fair. I just want to put that out there. <laughs> right. Yes, yes, yes. We certainly honor the spirit of Christ that is in this place. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. What you going to do when you get there? I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Y'all got it. 
Somebody didn't catch it there. Let everything. Yep, that's for the whole house. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Don't you do that. I want to give honor where all honor is due to our leader overseer, Irene Collins, to our first man. Amen. Deacon Collins, to the lovely lady of my life, Sister Charlisa Blackshear, to all you God's people, Lottie Dottie and everybody. We're going to Acts 2, verses 1 through 4. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. If I were to tag this text and preach from a topic, I would tag it, turn the power back on. We're going to talk a little while about turn the power back on. As a little boy growing up in the Church of God in Christ, I never really understood what it meant to be part of a Pentecostal church. I knew that when we came to church, that we would sing, that we would hear some good preaching, and that there would definitely be some shouting before the end of service. But I didn't really understand the real meaning of being Pentecostal until I was about 11 years old. I can remember going to, to a church on the south side of Toledo um, that was about half the size of Kingdom Grace and, uh, on a Friday night. I remember um, asking the evangelist that I had gone with what we were going for, and she said we were going to a tarrying service. If anybody don't know what a tarrying service is, that's when you go down to the church, and no matter what you got on, you can have on some scrubs if you need to have on some scrubs. You might want to put on some sweats and be comfortable. Because that's when you come to the house of the Lord. You don't worry about no music. You don't worry about who's there. It can be two or three. And you get down to the altar and you call on Jesus until you get what you came for. Church mother got up. And she would invite us all down to the altar to pray to the Lord to send his power. Everyone was all in that one place with the same thing on their mind. The Lord sending his power. At some point in the service while I was on the altar praying, that little mother came and laid her hands on me and she shouted, Power! Lord, send it. And I can remember feeling my whole body was overtaken by something greater than me. And I started crying and speaking in tongues. And that was a night that I was baptized in the Holy Ghost and I understood what it meant to be Pentecostal. To be a Christian that believed in the baptism of the Holy Ghost as mentioned in our text and that I would receive power from that moment on to fight against the enemy. But on the flip side, I must say that to my dismay that many of us Christians today have lost our power. We don't pray like we used to pray. We, we don't study the word like we used to study the word. We, we don't come to church like we used to come to. And it's all because we have lost our power. We, we can no longer pray for the sick and they recover. We don't know how to call demons by their names and cast them back to the pit of hell from where they came. We have become ineffective in the body of Christ because we have been disconnected from the power source. Uh, we have allowed things and people and circumstances in our lives to disconnect us from what has given us power. We have entertained the games of the enemy a little too long and have allowed our witness to be weakened. Spent too much time trying to please people and not enough trying to please God and our power has been drained. Some of y'all looking at me like you got egg on your face. I'm sorry. I know you dot all your eyes and cross all of your T's, but I was a sinner destined for hell on a one-way flight because I got caught up and disconnected from the power source. But hallelujah, I found my way back to the source. Hallelujah. Well, well, brother preacher, how do you get your power back? Well, I'm mighty glad you asked. The text says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, 
They were all with one accord in one place. I'm going to teach the text today. The first thing that you must do to get your power back is be with one accord. Ah, that's a hard one for church folk, but the saints understand that's part of the process. Uh, because most church folk don't like to agree on anything. We're supposed to be getting ready uh, to have a celebratory dinner for our leaders, and we can't get the planning done because we can't agree on what the menu should be. Or, or, or here's something new or relevant. The celebration choir wants to sing um, soon, but it won't happen because the members can't agree on what to wear on their debut Sunday. That ain't true. I just made it up. But thanks for us to get our power back, we must first be on one accord. We must set down our petty differences of opinions and get over our own egos and agree that we need the Holy Ghost. Doesn't matter what title you have in the church. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, then you don't have any power. Let me say it again. It does not matter what title you have in the church. I don't care if you're the chairman of the deacon board. I don't care if you are the pastor or the first man. I don't care if you are the elder or the minister. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, you ain't got no power. And if you are not on one accord, he will not come. When we experience the power of the Holy Ghost Sunday after Sunday here at KGFC, it isn't just because Overseer is the only one up here petitioning for him to come. But it's because we are standing in agreement with her. That we need to feel a touch. Oh, my God. We agree that we need a fresh wind. We agree that we need to feel a shaking in the spirit. Secondly, let me move because I feel like preaching. We must be in prayer together. If you read the first chapter of Acts, you will discover that Jesus told his homeboys not to leave Jerusalem and that they would soon be baptized in the Holy Ghost and that they would receive power after the Holy Ghost is come. It's in the text, y'all. It's come upon them. And so they continued in prayer and supplication. Sometimes we get together for the wrong reasons. Y'all might as well go ahead and say amen. Church folk don't want to get together unless there's food involved. Talk church. We don't want to get together for prayer anymore. I, I can pray on my own. Yeah, baby, you can pray on your own, but sometimes your prayer by itself won't cut it. Sometimes you need the backing of the saints to help you get a prayer through. Sometimes you might be going through something and you need your brother and your sister to come kneel with you and pray with you. And so I'm getting ready to go. This 120 was all with one accord. In one place. And suddenly, somebody shout suddenly. The text says, suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house mm -hmm, where they were sitting. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, when you're doing it right, you get God's attentions. Yeah, when you're calling on his name out of a pure place in your heart, it gets his attention. When you admit that you can't do it on your own and you're needing to step in, you get his attention. When you don't care if your makeup runs or if you sweat your hair out, or if you wrinkle up that suit, uh, crying out to the Lord, uh, you get his attention. Uh, I don't know uh, exactly what they were saying in their prayers, uh, but if I can just use my imagination here for a little moment, uh, I can hear somebody saying in the words uh, of the Thompson Community Choir, uh, my storage is empty uh, and I am available to you. Uh, feel me. Fill me up, Lord, until I overflow. And then if I pan the room a little more, I can hear that old mother that I heard that night in August when I was 11 years old saying, Lord, send your power. We won't move until you send your power. We can't make it without your power. We need a touch, Lord. Send your power. We need healing, Lord. Send your power. We need a miracle, Lord. Send your power. We need a breakthrough, Lord. Send your power. Some of you might want to know why it's 
so important that we have the power of the Holy Ghost on the inside of us. But I'm going to tell you a story, and then I'll bid you adieu. I was going to Kroger the other night to get some fruit for my wife. And as I walked in, they were doing construction. I walked up to the door, and I heard drilling. And then suddenly it stopped. And as I was getting ready to walk in, I heard a worker say, turn the power back on. I just stopped by to tell you, if you need the power of the Holy Ghost, the recipe is right here in Acts 2 and 4. All you have to do is look up toward heaven and say, Lord, send your power. Get connected to the source. Turn the power back on. That power will help you live holy. That power will help you live saved. That power will allow you to tread on serpents and tread on scorpions and all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Does anybody know about that power? Yes. When the enemy comes in like a flood, that power will lift up a standard against him. That power will keep the new ports off the smoker's lips. That power will keep the man or woman out of the bed that don't belong to him. That power can bring the prostitute off the corner and into the fold. Does anybody know that power? If you don't know it, Allow me to be exhibit A. I was a wretch undone. I wasn't fit to live. And I was scared to die. But I went to a meeting one night. And my heart wasn't right. And I said, Lord, it's me. It's me, oh Lord. I'm standing in the need of prayer. Not my mother. Not my father. But it's me. It's me, oh Lord. I'm standing in the need of prayer. This is for me. Be not dismayed. Whatever be time, God will. Yes, sir. God will take care of you. I didn't know. I was thinking deep in sin. Far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply stained within. Of the sea, he heard. <laughs> he heard my despairing cry, and from the waters he lifted me. Now safe am I, love. He lifted me when nothing else could help. When mama couldn't help. When daddy wasn't around to help. It was God's love that lifted me. It was God's love that saved me. Clap your hands. Tell God thank you. Come on, come on, come on, tell him thank you. Come on, come on, come on, tell him thank you. Hey. Did anybody know your Savior? Anybody know he'll save you? I got a poor Bishop McKissick right here. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he make the enemies a butcher? Won't he give you joy and sorrow? Won't he give you hope for tomorrow? Won't he dry your tears? Won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he? Won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he? Say yes. Say yes. Grab 
because the word day is talking about a period of revelation and illumination into who you are. See, the problem with the body of Christ is y'all know the word, but y'all don't believe the word. You know what John 3.16 said. You will familiar with the scripture, but can I tell you, we got to get more than familiar with the scripture. There should be somewhat of an arrogance about the people of God. I know in whom I believe. I know my God is going to do it. But then the word says Pentecost, 50. See, can I tell you, there could never be a Pentecost if there had not been a Passover. The Passover had to occur before the Pentecost. Well, prophetess, what's the Passover? You know, you've heard the story that the death angel came. See, Passover means death, but Pentecost means life. And when the blood was applied to the doorpost of the house, the deaf angel knew, my God, my God, I'm here to prophesy to somebody. Because if you think for one second the enemy did not come to take you out, but there's been a death. And no death is relevant without sacrifice. The Passover meant death. But Pentecost means life. Because when the Holy Spirit comes, when prophetically my day, hallelujah, of a new nation, had fully come. Fully. Like you, I got stuck there. At fully. Father, what you talking about? fully it's not enough for me to go halfway to do anything the old folks used to say it like this if you just gonna do a thing do it right fully fully do y'all understand that God wants to give you the all of him That God wants you to walk in the awe of him. And I got stuck at that Pentecost being 50. Because I'll be 50 in three weeks. I said, God, I refuse to be an old fool. <laughs> you can say stuck if you want to. I will not. I will not cross over into my day, my revelation, my illumination, my place of substance, my place of prosperity, my new season, and still be doing the same things I was doing in the last season. Because an old fool is just a young fool who grew up. There just ought not be something still named among the brethren. should be different than when you were before. If I keep doing the same thing and I keep getting the same results, that is a sure sign. But when that day, my God, I'm speaking to somebody. This is not just a day of celebration because it's the 50 days after the death and burial and resurrection. That's not just what this is. But God said, listen, I'm going to need y'all to cross over. I'm going to need you to come into your fullness. I'm going to need you to represent the day of your revelation, your illumination, the day the light went on, the day God, it clicked for me, the day I got it, the day it made sense, the day I understood that I don't have to have everything, I don't have to have every I dotted, I don't have to have every 
T cross. I don't have to look a certain way. I don't have to be a certain age. I can be any color. I can be any sex. I can be anything. But God is love as I understand who I am in you. I don't ever have to have a title. That's not what this is about. I'm, I, I'm not disregarding anything that was said this morning, but I'm going to need you to hear this. You can have all that and still have no power. Because power is not in what we say. Baby, power ain't in what you say. Because I tell folks, you can make your mouth say anything. need the Holy Ghost to speak in tongues in here. I don't need, I don't need all that, but you know what I need him? When I leave them doors. Honey, I need some power to live right. I need something to convict me. Because left to yourself and myself, we will self-destruct. Because they'll got a will. Whatever your name is, you got a will. And it will to do what it wants to do. But baby, there's something on the inside that will work on the outside. I tell people all the time, I don't know how folks live without the Holy Spirit. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not just I don't know. I don't get it. I don't know. I don't know how they make it from one day to the next. Why? Because on any given day, with the Holy Ghost, and say, listen, I hear the Spirit of the Lord when he said, it's time for some of y'all to just grow up. The Bible says that God is concerned with what concerns us. But you know what he's not concerned with? Your opinion. He didn't take counsel with you over nothing. He's not even concerned with your opinion about you. Don't go to God, not nay another day. Not nay another day. As if he's surprised about who you are and where you are and what you have and what you don't. when it's fully the day that I stepped into my understanding that if it had not been. See, when you done lived 50 years, you done lived some, you done lived a little something, something. A little something. But I done learned this. I will not. And I told my overseer this years ago, I won't do it. I will not be 
are public, celebrated publicly, and defeated privately. If I don't have no worship time at home, I ain't get ready to come in here and fake like I do. If I don't know, if this book stay closed from this Sunday to next Sunday, see, she, I didn't even know she was going to have me come. come if I'm not talking about me. I'm just trying to give y'all a revelation. You got to stay in connected to your word. Because I don't care how much TV preaching you watch. I don't even care how many Sundays you come in here. Baby, if you want some real power, you got to crack that book open. You got to slap them knees on that floor at home. You got to get in the presence of God. You got to make an altar where you are. You got to stand in the face of God no matter what comes and what goes. Because you're not always going to make it to the church. Oh, overseer, it's not always going to be on the other line. But I got a God in heaven. I know a God that is able to do exceeding abundantly above. I'm going to say this and I'm going to get this mic to overseer. Many of you heard my testimony and that's fine. You'll hear it again real quick for five seconds. At 19, when I lost my sight. 19 years old. I wasn't born blind. I became blind. I've had two cornea transplant surgeries. I was preaching when I couldn't see. I was prophesying to folks when I didn't know what you had on, but I told you what you had on. Because the gift ain't in my ability. If you don't think God will take something from you that you depend on to prove he's God, whether you got it or you don't, you better check again because he will. I was prophesying to folks. How you doing that? Don't ask me because I don't know. But I know one thing. I know what I can hear. This week, because of modern science and the and the prosperity of the Spirit of God. I was told that I'm gonna be receiving this new contact lens that'll give me 2040 vision. Listen, this is why I'm telling you this. I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, many of you have been looking for a change. But the reason you haven't received that shift, thank you, Holy Spirit, is because you've been too dependent and reliant on your own ability to get it done. But when the power of the Holy Ghost comes, he will give you, come on, super natural ability. I was doing things blind that seeing folks wouldn't do. He had called somebody with sight to prophesy. But they kept looking in the mirror. He said, okay. Well, I'll get somebody who even if she look in the mirror, she don't know what she looking at. Can I just let somebody know he's been calling you, but you keep looking in the mirror. You're so stuck on what you're doing, who you are, what you don't have. He said, now, nah. listen and listen well. You better move before I raise somebody up. Because this ain't about you. This is about kingdom assignment. And I will use who's ever two things, willing and obedient. I've been in more disobedience with God since my sight than I was when I couldn't see. I don't know who I'm talking to. But the Holy Spirit said, get out the mirror. You too focused on you. 
there's a power that is lying inside of you, that power of the Holy Spirit, it should move you past yourself. See, the power ain't just for me to lay hands on other folk and me to prophesy to other folk. I will prophesy to myself and command myself to come out of sin. I did it there a couple of months ago. I was in something I ain't had no business being in. I didn't, it, this is how I know this my mama. She called me. She knew. I wouldn't even tell her. I said, not this trip. She will not, she will not get me out of this one. If you don't know, if she ain't taught you enough yet to get yourself out of this, then you just stay stuck. Fully calm. I said, you will not ruin this for me. I was talking to me. You will not blow it. You will not stay here. You, you, if you, I'm going to give you 21 days to make a change. I did it because I understand that there's a power greater than that situation I was in. Somebody been in the mirror too long. And, and instead of using the power, you keep looking at you. And I can tell you right now, you will never get it done. Now is your win. And this is your day to walk into the promises of God. Yes, yes. I really pray that you all heard everything that's been said today because it is absolutely some of you all have allowed the enemy to trick you some of y'all sitting right under the sound of my voice are focused on stuff that ain't got nothing to do with God some of y'all sitting under the sound of my voice are being influenced by people that are not being influenced by God Some of y'all are taking in too much negativity. Some of you all, God is trying to get you to another place, a better place. But you won't go because you're trying to take everybody with you that's been in your last season. I need y'all to hear that. Come on, Minister Ernest. He said it won't work. God has so much more. And on this day of Pentecost. I'm so thankful for this day. Y'all have blessed me today. Pentecost represents y'all a day of change. It represents a day of change. And when she made that point about and when revelation and illumination come. So here's what I want to do. There are some of you you it hit you when Brandon was preaching. It hit you when Minister Justin was preaching. It hit you when Prophetess was prophesying. There are some of you in here today that you are ready for this to be your day of change. There are some of you in here today, you tired of your own self. I want you to come to this altar. Don't, don't just sit there like y'all don't know I'm talking to you. Because prophecy is flowing today. I will call you out. Come on, ain't no shame in it. Just be honest. I'm sick. I'm I, I'm sick of me. <laughs> I'm tired of my own self. I'm tired of trip. I'm tired of tripping. <laughs> Thank you, treasure. I'm I'm tired of tripping. I'm tired of thinking. I, I start out going this way, and then somebody say something to me, and then all of a sudden I'm going back this way. Then somebody else say something to me, and then I say, okay, I got it together now. I'm going I'm back on the Lord's side. And three days later, somebody, y'all come stand with me. Y'all have preached. This is your day of change, beloved. This is your day. 
to allow Holy Spirit. You you you've been you've been listening to everybody else. You've been you've been hearing what everybody else thought. You've been you've been considering what everybody else think you ought to do. Now God is calling you to the altar today to say, "Here, I want to start speaking to you about you." Oh God. Tell, is Andre still in there? Is Andre still? Tell Andre to come out here. Because this is this day is significant. Come on, come on, Camilla, come on. If you can, I know it's difficult for you, but if you can just come and sit right there. Hallelujah. Come on out of that room. You now, now I don't want you to hear Mama calling you. I need you to hear the Lord calling you out that room. Yeah, I'm talking to you. The Lord said you've become too comfortable. The Lord said you are comfortable with what you're doing, but you know in your heart of heart that that ain't all you're supposed to be doing for the Lord. I don't mean to put you out there like that, but I'm going to obey God because I'd rather be in trouble with you than be in trouble with him. God said you got too much to offer and too much that you know you're supposed to be doing. Stop settling. Oh, I don't know you, God. He said, stop settling. Andre, stop settling. There's more that you're supposed to be even doing for him. Stop settling. Stop settling. Come, uh, Jay, come stand beside your future. <laughs> Hallelujah. It ain't even 12 o'clock yet, so we all right. Ain't we, Kenny? My son say we all right, we all right. <laughs> Hold your futures with hand. Hallelujah. Christy, they need your help. You are not losing a sister. You're gaining a brother. And God said, you're going to be the voice of reason in your family. Because her life is getting ready to change and everybody ain't happy about the change. Some people don't really don't even want it to change. Because hurting people hurt people. So there are some folk that are miserable and they want her to be miserable too. But God said he is raising you up as the one that's going to celebrate this union. And he is raising you up as the voice of reason in the family. And because people in your family respect you, God said he's going to use you to shut some stuff down. Oh, God. God said, because you're going to be faithful in this assignment, he said, you're not going to have to worry about nothing for you and yours. As you are faithful to God, God said, tell her, I got her. I got all of this worked out. He got everything for Zabe, for Isaiah, for, for uh, thank you. <laughs> all of y'all, he got it all worked out. But God said, he's going to use you. You're going to be, you're going to, he, there's a new power coming upon you today. Oh, come on, Zell. Come here. Come lay hands on her. There's a new power and a new anointing. Oh, God. Tell Kia to hand me one of them top uh, things she got. Krista, switch me places, switch them places for just a moment, please. Come here, Jake and Ebony. Sure, na 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 la ba. I decree today that nothing and no one is going to be able to come against this union. This union is going to grow and flourish. Hold your hands up. And at times when y'all get, if y'all get frustrated, try to pull away from her. You can't. 
just this, this is symbolic of Holy Spirit wrapping himself around oh yo yo god around this union and nothing and no as a matter of fact by the power of holy spirit on this pentecost sunday the mouth of the naysayers is now clamped shut it shall flourish you all shall prosper you all shall be another example where is um oh you up here y- y'all will be another example of what a wholesome god-fearing christian marriage it's gonna be god say he got you i need you to lift your hands because as of this day they'll just kind of just kind of uh-huh as of this day god say he's removing honor oh, no, no, no. oh. God, he said he's removing all of the past. He is washing you clean. Even as we stand praying today, he is washing you clean from the things of the past. And he is calling you and your bride to walk into a new place. This is y'all's new season. God has ordained this union. And it shall grow and flourish saith God. Hallelujah. God. I come against confusion. <laughs> I come against confusion in your life, Tammy. I come against I come against the emotional roller coaster. up and down and sideways and in and out. God said he is delivering you. He is releasing you today. He's giving you a new clarity. And a new. And after this day, what he says is going to be so clear to you that it isn't even going to matter when somebody speaks against it. Holy Spirit said there's been times in the past when you thought you knew and then somebody would say something and then it would throw you back into, well, maybe God, I, I missed you or maybe I didn't hear you or maybe I didn't get it right. God said, no, He this day, on this day of Pentecost, he is removing the maybe I from your life. He is giving you a certainty that you will know what he is saying for your life and then he's empowering you to walk in it. I'm going to say this like this. We can talk privately and I'll give you fuller uh, revelation. But for the sake of right now, I'm just going to say it like this. I come against generational curses today. Just because it was in your bloodline don't mean it has to be in you. As a matter of fact, the, ain't the, the Father is placing a hedge around you. That generational curse is broken. It will not come near your dwelling. It's not going to come near you. It's not going to come near Jeremiah because it is broken today. Save God! Okay, y'all. I'm almost done, I promise. <laughs> Shanita, the Lord will say to you to be steadfast. Because you are making a difference. You don't see it yet. It don't feel like it yet. You don't look at your family and see the change that you want to see yet. But Father is saying to you today, you are making a difference. And they are seeing, they're seeing the change. They're seeing you talk more about God. They're seeing you. (laughs) Okay, say that, Lord, out loud.
And God says, stay steadfast. Because as they see this work in you, it's bringing a change in them. All of your children <laughs> going to know the Lord the way you want them to know the Lord. Somebody give God praise. You, you put a post on Facebook the other day, and it said, uh, this might not be exactly right, but it says something to the effect of, that's why my name is Miracle. And God said, that's right. He said, that is why your name is Miracle. Because you have survived some stuff that would have killed other people. You have survived some stuff that would have made other people give up on God. But you allowed it to push you closer to God. And so God said that, yes, you are right. That is why your name is Miracle. Because people are going to begin to look at you and not just see this little girl, but they're going to begin to see God's ability and God's keeping power through you. And I come against this thing that the enemy has tried to do for so long in your life. I come against confusion. I come against um, needing and wanting to fit in at any cost. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. God said the next time you look in the mirror, you're going to see somebody that's been accepted by him. You're not, don't have, you don't have to see yourself as broken or lonely or, or whatever those things are that the enemy. The next time you look in the mirror, you're going to see somebody that's been accepted by God. You're going to see somebody that's loved by God. You want to see someone who has meaning, life has meaning from God. He will never give up on your miracle. And he will always be there for you. Hallelujah. Okay, lift y'all's hands. Father, I thank you for these, your people, who respond to the word today. <laughs> oh, God. And so we just thank you, Father, today for a new beginning. Thank you, Father, that this is our win. <laughs> and I decree, Father, that every one of these are standing at this altar, everyone that's standing behind me, everyone that's receiving this in their spirit, those on live stream and, and, and uh, Periscope who are receiving this in their spirit, that they're going to be able to look back on June 4th, 2017, and say that was win. That was when the chains fell off. That was when healing took place. That was when deliverance took place. It was my day of when. It was when. It was the day that the scales fell off my eyes. It was the day that I stopped playing games with God. <laughs> it was the day that I surrendered my will and said, Father, nevertheless, the day that I understood that I need him to fully come. I, I don't need just an occasional visitation. I don't need just a portion of the Lord, but this is the day that I say, Lord, I need you to fully come. Thank you for all of these that have ministered today. And I come against backlash and retaliation even now. And I decree that even they shall walk in accordance to the words that they have ministered this day. And as Minister Brandy pointed out, we won't be on the sidelines murmuring and complaining, but we will be encouraging and lifting up our brothers and sisters. We become cheerleaders today of one another. As Minister Justin preached, Father, we're going to get a fresh, fresh dose of power. We're going to turn the power back on. We admit to you, Father, that some of us have become lazy in our reading and lack in our praying, God. But today, oh God, we ask you to forgive us. 
divine that created us, oh God. A clean heart and renew within us a right spirit. Cause, Father, us to have a hunger and a thirst for your holy word. Father, now at this altar, I've spoken to many, but there are also many that I've not spoken to, but you know every situation. You know every circumstance. You know what your people stand in the need of. Father, thank you for reigning on us today, on this Pentecost Sunday. Thank you today in this year of great victory that you have caused us to look for the wind and expect you to fully come. Empower your people like never before. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on now, if you receive that, I need you to just hug somebody and tell them I receive the fresh wind of Holy Spirit. Come on, tell them I receive the fresh wind of Holy... Come on, tell them I receive the fresh wind of Holy Spirit in my life this day. Now, come on. If you mean it, I need you now to put your hands together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. What a, what a mighty God. And what a mighty Pentecost service. <laughs> Are y'all glad y'all came to church on Pentecost Sunday? Woo, I know I am. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. All right, huh? Oh, Lord, did she drive by herself today? Well, you going to, somebody might have to go to Akron with them. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, it's giving time. Hallelujah. God, have mercy. What an amazing God we serve. You all right, D? Okay. All right. All right, come on. I need a couple of months.